What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome. This is Art Theories. I'm Tom. I like to talk about art, contemporary art, art history, all that stuff. But this video is going to be kind of different because I'm going to be talking about how you write a personal statement for art school. In case you didn't know, I am an art teacher. I've been an art teacher for a number of years now and I have experience helping six formers to apply for art schools and that involves writing a personal statement, making a portfolio, doing the interviews, the whole shebang. And over the next couple of weeks, I'm going to upload videos on every single aspect of how you get into an art school. But in this video, I'm going to give you a step by step breakdown of how I help my students to write personal statements tailored for creative courses. In this video, it's going to be specifically tailored towards people either applying for an art foundation course or a fine arts course but the vast majority of things I say are going to be very general and would be equally useful applying to any creative course whether it's like fashion or photography or graphic design the majority of what I say will apply but I'm going to make it a bit more tailored towards fine art and foundation because just it's what I know. As a disclaimer again this video is going to be referencing the British university system and UCAS and all these things which are UK specific but that's a very small fraction of what I'm talking about. This video should be helpful to anyone who just needs to write a personal statement for any university system but there are small details which might be UK specific. Apologies about that if you're international. And if I could give you one piece of advice before you start writing your statement Give yourself loads of time. Don't do this last minute and don't rush it. If you rush it, it will be the most stressful experience of your life and you're going to create a piece of writing that doesn't represent you in the best light. So give yourself loads of time, take lots of breaks, do it slowly in a way which causes the least amount of stress and the least amount of pressure on you. There may be times when writing this statement that you get stressed, frustrated, overwhelmed. If that happens, don't worry. Pause this video, close the laptop, go for a walk, take a day or two and come back to your personal statement when you have a fresh mind and you just, because it is a lot, I get it, it's really stressful. And that's why I say give yourself plenty of time so you can take time off when you need it because no one writes a personal statement in one go that would be insane. Yeah, so obviously I'm not going to tell you what to write in your statement. I don't know you and I don't know your practice. That's up to you. But what I can do is I can offer you a structure to follow and advice that will lead to you creating the best possible personal statement which reflects you and your strengths and makes you as desirable as possible by the most competitive courses. I'm going to add timestamps to this video so feel free to skip forward or skip backwards, do whatever you have to do to make the most out of this video. There'll be short periods of time where I'm talking specifically about things which only apply to art foundation courses. That's normally quite brief and you can wait it out or you can just skip forward a little bit but there are timestamps so basically make it as useful to you as possible. Step one, you need to choose a university course to apply for. This isn't easy and it may take some time. You may already know which course and university you'd like to apply for, in which case you can skip forward a little bit, timestamps down below. If you're unsure exactly what or where you want to study, then I recommend you go to a couple of open days. And also I recommend if it's around May or June time, going to a couple of degree shows. This will give you a sense of the different cultures and the different strengths and weaknesses of each university and also it'll make your application stronger when you come to apply because the university will see that you've been proactive and you've attended open days and you've attended degree shows. I also recommend you check out different university websites. Each course should have its own web page with loads of information about the different modules, about the different facilities, workshops, stuff like that. The more you research in this stage, the more likely you are to make the right decision and end up applying for the right course. And in the long run, that's going to have a domino effect of positive things for your life. So do loads of research. Make sure you're making the right decision. Don't just apply for a course because your friend's applying for it. Figure out what is the right course for you. And if you really don't know which creative course you want to apply for, 
I recommend applying for an art foundation course. That's a year long course where you get to experiment with all the different creative styles that art school has to offer. So you'll do a couple of weeks of fashion, a couple of weeks of painting, a couple of weeks of graphic design, a couple of weeks of illustration, animation, sculpture. You get to try everything so that you really get to understand what course it is that you want to study. I did an art foundation and it was honestly the best time ever. I learned so much and it put me on the right track. So consider it. Just for a bit of context, fine art courses and all other creative courses are applied for via the UCAS system. This is the British University system. It's like a website where you upload a personal statement, you tell them who you are and what grades you have, and you can apply to up to five courses. You put, you upload your personal statement onto UCAS and it has a character limit of 4,000 characters, including spaces, which is roughly one A4 page of writing. So if you're applying to multiple courses via UCAS, you've got to be careful. You can't actually name any of the courses you want to apply for by name in your personal statement. And you can't talk about the specific reasons why you want to apply to a certain course because all the other universities see the same copy of your personal statement. So if you're applying through UCAS, you can't be specific about which university course you want to apply for. However, if you're applying for an art foundation course, that is done outside of UCAS. You apply directly to the course. This means you can write a personal statement which is specifically tailored for that course. So you can say exactly why you want to study at Brighton Foundation course in your personal statement. And you can be specific about the things about Brighton that attracted you and appeal to you. And that will make your personal statement stand out even more. Step two. Once you have decided which course and which university you want to apply for, you need to do as much research as possible about this course. And I cannot overstate how important this is. You need to know exactly what you're applying for, why the course is good, what facilities they offer, what modules they offer. You need to know all that stuff, not just so that you can make sure you're applying to the right course, but this way, if you do your research properly, you will know what that course is looking for in its applicants, meaning you can market yourself as exactly what the course wants, making you just way more likely to get in. So every single course should have a web page on the university website, and that course will have a specific breakdown of what the course offers, its modules, its facilities, etc., etc. I need you to read that top to bottom no skipping. A lot of courses also have videos you can watch. That's also a really good way to get a sense of like, just what the course is about, what its culture's like. Um, and even better, most courses will have a specific page on their website that says what they're looking for in an applicant and what they want to read in a personal statement. So just as an example, the University of Arts London is apparently the second best art school in the world. And they've got the, this guidelines page telling you what a personal statement is and what they want to see written in a personal statement. Let's just read it together. I'll read it out loud um, and I'll put it on the screen. A personal statement is a written pitch. It is your opportunity to tell us what inspires you what you're interested in and why you want to study your chosen course at UAL. Where to begin? First, ask yourself a few questions. Why this subject? Why UAL? What artists and styles inspire you? What experience and skills do you have? What are your career goals and how can this course help you achieve them? That's pretty much all they want to know. So you just need to elaborate on those five questions, five, five questions and that's it. That's your personal statement. They've got a few tips here. If you want to read the tips, um, just pause it. I'm not going to read it all out. And I'll, I'll link the whole thing in my description so you can access that page really easily if you want to. And as I said, this is specifically, I think, designed for personal statements tailored towards their foundation course, which is why they specifically ask you to say, why do you want to study at UAL? because if you're applying for a degree course through UCAS, you can't really answer that question. If you're applying for a fine arts course or any other creative course that's not a foundation, 
you are applying through UCAS, you have to write, write one single statement and it can't mention any course by name. Every course pretty much has its own personal statement guidelines, which can be found online. If I was you, I would go to the website of your first choice of course in university and I would find their personal statement guidelines. And I can guarantee you they will have a list of bullet point questions that they want you to answer in your personal statement. And they're all quite similar, but they are a bit different. So if I was you, I would find the specific guidelines and the specific questions for your first choice of university. I really liked Glasgow School of Arts prompt questions. They're nice, they're simple, they're direct, and they're just laid out in a nice, clean way, good graphic design. So we're gonna take a look at what Glasgow School of Art is looking for in a applicant. So this is published on the Glasgow School of Arts website. It says, we would recommend that you try and cover some of the following points in your UCAS personal statement for creative courses. Why are you interested in the subject area? The materials, methods, and processes you use to make work, the ideas, concepts, and research behind your work, information about extracurricular or independent creative activities that you've taken part in, your creative strengths and any other evidence that you're well prepared to undertake a degree in this area, what do you hope to gain from a course? So if you answer those six questions in one long piece of writing, you've told Glasgow School of Art everything they need to know about you. So like I said, pretty much every art school has their own set of questions they want you to answer in your personal statement. If I were you, I would pause this video in a moment. I would go to the website of your first choice course, find out what questions they want answered in a personal statement, and I would write those questions down. Step three, write down on a piece of paper the questions which were published by your first choice of course. So we know what course we're applying for and we know what the course wants to hear from us because we researched that course, we found the guideline, we found the prompt questions. We've written the prompt questions down. Now, all we have to do is answer them. If I were you, I would write it down on a piece of paper because that way you're gonna be less distracted. I put the laptop away, I put the phone in another room. I would sit with those questions and I would just try and think, why am I interested in art? What are the materials, methods and processes I use to make work? What ideas are behind my art? And I would try and come up with the most honest answers possible. And like I said, it doesn't have to be written in perfect English. It doesn't have to be in full sentences. So here's my ones. I, I'm sort of pretending that I'm applying for Glasgow School of Art just because I liked the prompt questions. Also, back when I was like 19, I actually got rejected from Glasgow School of Art. So I think I'm just replaying that trauma. I'm not sure. But um, so these are my questions. I wrote the questions down in bold, like Sharpie pen. And then I answered them in like a regular ballpoint pen. And I like doing it this way because it takes off the pressure of having to write perfectly first time round. This isn't about writing perfectly. This is about getting the ideas out onto the page and helping you to figure out what you do think. What, like, what, what do you stand for? What is your art about? What do you, what, why do you want to study art? And there is no right and wrong answer. Like, there's... It's not like there's a correct answer that the courses are waiting to hear, but they the courses want to know who you are and why you want to be here. And there are reasons, and those reasons are good enough. So sit down, figure out what your reasons are, write them down, and that's pretty much, that's step three. By the way, if for some bizarre reason, the course you're applying for doesn't have specific guidelines for what they want you to write in your personal statement, you could use the prompt questions published by University of the Arts London or Glasgow or any other course. They're, they're quite general, but I think if possible, answer the questions that your first choice of university want you to ask. But if for some mad reason they've not published those questions, any, any of the questions I've put in this video would do. Step four, type up your answers. 
So we now have the raw material of your personal statement. You have all the answers to all the questions written down. Might be in bullet points. It might just be jotted down in a diagram or just some keywords, whatever. That's completely fine. The point is we know what we need to talk about now. This is your diamond in the rough. The next step is just to refine it. So if you have access to a computer and you have access to Microsoft Word or another writing document program, I would sit down, type out those questions and in proper sentences and in nice paragraphs, I would try and write down the answers to these questions, but just in a way that flows and would make sense to another reader. Don't worry about making all the different answers connect just yet. Just answer them as, as if it was five or six totally separate questions on a document and you're just answering them and you're making it flow and you're making it make sense to someone who's not you and doesn't know you. So mine ended up looking something like this. Um, as you can see, each prompt question has a couple of paragraphs answered. Some some questions got a bit more words out of me than others. That's completely fine. It's not like you need to massively elaborate on each answer. I, I would say like two, pro whatever. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter. Everyone's personal statement's different. Everyone's going to answer some questions more elaborately than others. And there's no right or wrong way to do that. That's right. I'm so committed to this video that not only have I made this video, but I've also written a personal statement, even though I'm not applying to art school. So if that's not worth you hitting the like button, you subscribing, you hitting that like notification button, bell shaped thing that tells you when I'm publishing, I don't know what is. Also, don't pay attention to what I've written. The actual content of what I've written is completely irrelevant to you because we're different people and I'm almost 30. I'm guessing you're probably like in sixth form or you might be a mature student, but we're in very different places on our creative journey. And so our personal statements will look completely different. I'm not asking you to compare, but the reason I wrote a personal statement is so that I can show you the process I used to write it, not so that I can show you the answers because there's, there are no answers. It's just about you talking about yourself. Um, and final quick piece of advice. Now that you have typed up your answers, it's a pretty good time to check the character limit. Remember, if you're applying for a course via UCAS, you have a character limit of 4,000 words, including spaces. You can check the character limit by pressing this button at the bottom of Microsoft Word. If you're not using Word, I, I don't know how you do that. That should give you a good indication of whether you need to add a bit more to your personal statement or take a bit out. My character limit was slightly under, not that much under, but slightly under. So I need to add a couple more sentences just to get myself near that 4,000 character mark. It doesn't have to be exactly 4,000 characters, but I would try and get it close. I wouldn't, wouldn't go over, but I would try and get it close. Also, before I forget, UCAS is very good at detecting plagiarism. If you've copy and pasted something, even if it was from another person's personal statement, which was submitted a couple of years ago, UCAS can pick that up. Also, UCAS can pick up things you've copy and pasted from the internet. So don't even think about plagiarizing. All that will happen is that your application will get rejected and you've just wasted your time. So make sure it's original writing. Step five. Delete the questions and make the text flow. Well done. You have written your first draft of your personal statement. Woo! First, delete the um, the questions so you're just left with the answers. So it's just going to be a big block of text which isn't very connected and doesn't make sense. Mine look like this. Yours might look different. That's completely fine. Your next job is to make the paragraphs flow nicely. Do you have answers to one question which lead nicely into answers to another question? Could you connect two paragraphs together? Could you rearrange the paragraphs so it flows in a, in a way that makes sense? You might at this stage also realize that things need to be rewritten. Um, you don't need an introduction or a conclusion yet because we're going to do that last. So right now you're just working on the main body of the text and Ideally, we want to make it one flowing piece of writing. 
So it becomes harder and harder for me to tell you what to do because everyone's statement looks different and I'm not able to see your statements. But ideally, we should have one flowing piece of text which covers all the questions that you were answering published by your first choice of university um, website. And that's what we're doing. Step five is just make it flow. Once you've done this, I recommend saving it and leaving your personal statement for a couple of days. It really helps when you're writing to walk away from the thing you're writing, do something completely different for a while because then you can come back to it with fresh eyes. So once you do have that block of writing that flows and makes sense and is in proper English, I would recommend saving it, walking away, do something else for a while, come back to it in like two days because you might realize there are certain things which need to be rewritten, certain things which you thought you think, but you don't actually think that, you think something else. That you'll come back to it and certain things you'll realize have to change. And that's completely fine. That's part of the writing process. So yeah, take a little break, pause this video, save this video so you can come back to it. And we'll do step six soon. Obviously, if you don't want to take a break, we can just keep going. It's fine. But who doesn't want to take a break? Come on. Step six, write an intro and a conclusion. In my opinion, introductions and conclusions are the hardest part of any piece of writing. That's why I prefer to leave them to the very end after you've written the middle of your piece of writing. So you now have a beautiful block of text which explains who you are and probably explains why you want to study art, why you like art, the kind of things you do when you make art. And that's brilliant. All we need to do now is the bookends. If I were you, I would start your personal statement talking about just why you like art very generally. So for my introduction, I tried to write a very personal explanation of what art means to me and why I make art. Yours will look completely different because I'm not you and you're not me. Yours might look better than mine. Like the point is we're trying to show the reader who we are. So we're not trying to copy anyone else. There's no right or wrong way to do this. And mine is like actually super personal. And ideally, I think yours should be super personal as well. Um, I'm just showing you that I started my statement by talking about like what art means to me, why I like it in a slightly general way. And I recommend you do something similar. Top tip, avoid writing. I have a passion for art in your introduction. Because just because you've said you have a passion for art doesn't mean that anyone can just say that. Show us that you have a passion for art by talking about it in a way that's engaging and passionate. And we will be able to tell if you have a passion for art. So you don't need to say it. And I recommend concluding your personal statement by talking about what you hope to gain by studying fine art or by studying whatever course you're applying for. And again, this will vary from person to person. In my conclusion, I've actually written... I'm not sure if I want to be a paid artist, which is completely valid. Not everyone who's applying to go to art school has to want to be a paid artist. There are so many varied reasons why you'd want to apply for art school. And I just wanted to show that like, that's a completely acceptable thing to say is I'm not sure if I want to be a paid artist. Like you might want to study at art school because you want to expand your brain. You want to learn to think in different and creative ways. You want to en like culturally enrich yourself. You want to make the amazing friends that art school has to offer. You might want to learn how to do everything in a very creative way. Like there are so many enriching reasons why you might want to go to art school. I think the best thing is if you have a think about why you want to go to art school what really is it that draws you to this world because clearly you're motivated to go you're sat here watching this video what is that reason and can you can you explain and summarize your personal statement by writing about that reason if you're writing a statement for foundation then i recommend concluding your statement with some specific reasons why that foundation course will benefit you but you can only do that if you're applying for a foundation because it's outside of ucas if you can spare the characters i recommend finishing your personal statement by saying something like thank you for taking the time to read my application but that's completely optional and if you're struggling to reach the character limit if you're kind of over 
avoid writing that because it's a waste of characters. But if you're under characters and you want to pad out your statement a bit, that sentence, thank you for taking the time to read my application, that's going to help you out a little bit. Step seven, final touches. Before we talk about the final touches, well done. You have now written a personal statement. That is a huge achievement. Nice work. Um, but before we start celebrating, there are a few final touches we have to do before our personal statement is ready to be uploaded. So, firstly, is your statement within the character limit? UCAS is 4,000 characters, including space spaces. Foundation course, word limits and character limits vary. Figure out what yours is. Make sure you are in the ballpark of that number. Definitely not over the word limit. Only slightly under. Secondly... Wait a few days and reread your personal statement. Are you happy with it? Does anything have to change? If so, now's the time to do it. Thirdly, and very importantly, get somebody else to read your personal statement and to do a spelling and grammar check. Choose someone who is meticulous. Don't just get your friend to do it. Choose someone who's like a robot who picks up on every detail. That's the person you need reading your personal statement because a single spelling mistake will cost you your place on the course. So don't be that guy. Make sure make sure that you've got zero spelling and grammar mistakes in this piece of writing. Get two people to read it. That way you're double sure. Fourthly, make sure you're aware of deadlines. Make sure you know exactly when you need to upload this piece of writing and any kind of online portfolio that goes along with it and make sure you upload it all in good time so that it's not left to the last day, not left to the last minute, and it's not something which you have to stress about on the day. And finally, pat yourself on the back. You have now written a personal statement and it's ready to go. Well done, that's amazing. That's a big achievement, it's really hard, and I'm sure you did great. So pat yourself on the back, do something nice, go watch a movie, go eat some ice cream, go hang out with friends, uh, well done. If you found this video useful, please like it, subscribe it, comment, send it to other people who are applying to art schools. I need your support. So yeah, help me in any way you can. And I'm going to make more videos about getting into art school. So if you want to see those, I've got a video coming up about how to make a portfolio. I've got a video coming up about how to conduct an interview for an art school course. Subscribe and follow this channel. Thank you very much and have a lovely day.